Welcome to Sailing Lunacy. This is Jennifer, and I'm Mark. I promise you we will get to sailing and cruising one day, but in this episode it's all about water makers and the install we did on our Leopard 384. So water makers are basically pretty simple devices. All of them are going to have a lift pump. So this is a lift, 12 volt lift pump that will basically bring seawater in from the ocean into the boat, into the vessel, and up to the series of filters. So you, most of them will be set up with a 20 micron filter, like you see here, then stepping down to a five micron filter. Uh, and that's basically just gonna get all of the, the heavy sediments out of the water. After the five micron filter, the water is gonna run over here to the high pressure pump. A high pressure pump can be 110 driven, 12 volt driven, or engine driven. Uh, we had 12 volt on our last boat and on this vessel because we plan on having enough lithium and inverter. Uh, we are going to use this 110 drive motor. So basically this unit will just bolt onto this unit. Uh, it's going to be pretty heavy so we're going to have to have a pretty solid uh, area to mount that. After the high pressure pump, you're going to use these blue high high pressure lines that are going to bring the water into the membrane. The membrane is where all the magic happens on a, on a water maker. So coming into the membrane, you'll basically adjust this T handle here, and that is going to adjust the pressure going through back and forth through both membranes. And you're going to adjust this up up to uh, a max of about 900 PSI in most uh, ocean water. It's going to run around 800 to 900. Brackish water, you might run that as low as 500. Um, with the goal of getting the outgoing water flow at about 40 gallons per hour, uh, while also keeping an eye on the total dissolved solids. That's what this little unit will read. That's basically. Uh, measuring mineral content and salt in the water. So it's a balance between adjusting the high pressure uh, valve and getting the correct water flow and the correct salinity. Uh, and then we'll have this white line basically will just come out of the unit and run into the freshwater tanks. So overall they're a pretty simple uh, design, pretty simple unit other than the fact that all of these little bits and gadgets have to get installed uh, somewhere. All right, so these little gadgets, the carbon filter and this, uh, basically this is for lawn sprinkler systems. This is a pretty clever way to uh, set up your freshwater uh, flush. So after using the water maker, you'll be able to come in here and set this for probably, I'm, I, haven't, I don't know what they recommend yet. It's gonna be somewhere probably between three and 10 minutes. Uh, that's going to pull water from the fresh water tank, run it through the carbon filter, and then basically flush out all of the membranes and all of the pre-filters. Uh, that's so you only have fresh water in the system. So why are we doing a fresh water flush? Because um, everybody likes to be fresh, that's why. No, for real. The ocean is alive, it has all types of microorganisms growing in it, and when your unit is just sitting there, basically all of that stuff is going to die off. Uh, so in your pre-filters, in your membranes, after about five days, uh, it, it actually, if you, if you leave ocean water in it, it gets pretty rancid inside there. So doing a freshwater flush is going to, one, save wear and tear on the membranes. It's going to also save wear and tear on the pre-filters. And it's going to keep you from having to run the unit uh, an excessive amount of time when you first start it up just to get the smell out because it's pretty gross in there if you don't do a freshwater flush after each use. Uh, on LS1, we use the water maker every day, so we never, we rarely did a freshwater flush on that unit. If we were going to be off the boat for more than three to five days, uh, we would do a freshwater flush. But there were a couple of times there uh, where we didn't do that, and then the first time you use the water maker, we would have to run the unit for about an hour just to get the smell out, even though the 
the total dissolved solid numbers would be in the good range. The water kind of was a little funky, a little grassy smelling. Um, so that's why you do a fresh water uh, flush and that's why we're going to have that stuff installed in the unit and also why you see it on just about every water maker that is sold. Since Lunacy was an ex-charter boat in her previous life, she came with a massive amount of water storage. Two 100-gallon tanks and then one that's about 60 gallons. So it's this smaller 60-gallon that we removed and that's where we're going to put the water maker. So step one on a water maker install is supposed to be read the instructions and watch the installation videos. We're not going to do it that, at least not yet. So we've been looking at wire runs and water runs and we know that the first step to the water maker is going to be getting water to the water maker itself. So down in the bilge, that is the seacock for the air conditioner. Uh, on LS1 we, com we basically piggyback off of that through hole uh, because if you are in a marina the only time we ever ran the air is if we were in the marina. If you're in a marina, you typically don't want to make water and you don't need to make water because uh, they have it there. So we are going to come down here and we are going to put a, a T right here in this line uh, just downstream of the air conditioning strainer. So we'll put a T here that'll go to our water maker inlet line and probably mount our 12 volt uh, intake pump, uh, maybe somewhere right in here. So that's kind of the real estate we're looking at where to do all of this. But today uh, we don't have all the fittings, we don't have the right wire. So today all we're gonna do is run the water lines and get into that forward compartment where the water maker is gonna be. Can you push that through? Uh, all right, hold on. Doing a bench assembly of a water maker is about a one to two hour job. Running all of the hoses and wires that are required for the installation could take multiple days though, depending on the difficulty of accessing different parts of the vessel. It's gotta be up there somewhere. So there we go. As you remember earlier, the T is going to go here. The water pump is going to go here. We have now gotten raw water all the way up to here. And as I'll show you in a second, if you go see those two fittings right there, that's where the water tanks, two of the three water tanks come through the bulkhead. So we're going to go up there and drill a hole the same size of this blue tube so we, so we can feed the water line through to where the water maker is going. All right, welcome to my workspace. So that is where the two lines for what was the starboard tank and the smaller auxiliary tank that we pulled, that's where they went through that bulkhead. Um, that is a watertight bulkhead, or should be a watertight bulkhead, but we're going to drill a hole that's just slightly oversized, uh, and then I'll come back in and either 5200 or it's one of the rare uses, rare times where I would use silicone on a boat. Um, I just silicone the hole shut because I've got an extra tube of that laying around. But anyway, for now, let's drill a hole. Also going to go at a slight angle that the line is that I want the line to come through. So I'm not drilling. Or I'm drilling crooked. I'm just drilling crooked on purpose. Can you feed that line through? Uh, Got to stick your head in the hole and look up. Today, 
we're going to start with getting 12 volt power to the water pump to the lift pump uh, our panel has a few spare breakers on it so we're going to come back here and see uh, upper left hand corner what that number is So that was number 202 on the breaker. So we're going to come downstairs now. I'm sure this footage is terrible. Shed some light on the situation. So 202 coming in right here. So we can tap in positive there tie in the negative down there on that bus bar and looking down into the dark we are going to be mounted right underneath that panel so there should be plenty of cord on the pump that was supplied to tie in using the AC water strainer uh, so let's get to work. step one we're going to confirm that the seacock is closed went ahead and opened this valve which drains the AC pump and AC water line just so when we cut the line we won't fill the boat up with water or at least only fill the bilge up with water all right so we are wired into this spare here so you flip the switch and the pump is running It's so a little bit of a time delay on that, so it threw me off at first because I was flipping the switch and it wasn't coming on. Uh, so there was there was a different fitting that was shipped with the unit for here, right here. Uh, so that is the only thing that's really keeping us from getting. Um, it's the only thing that's keeping us from getting water up to where the unit is going to mount. So a trip to the hardware store and we should rectify that. Not the most elegant solution for mounting the pump, uh, but with the angle of the tube and the real estate that we had to work with, um, that's the best we could do with the space that we had. So yesterday, we did something un almost unprecedented on Lunacy. Um, I read the instructions and I watched most of the ins install videos on the website uh, mounting the motor and high pressure pump which is going to go right here was one of my bigger concerns on the project because this locker can get wet and i wanted to mount it as high as possible so i was going to construct some elaborate shelf in here uh, which we're kind of limited on materials we can get on island and I was probably gonna have to build it out of plywood and then probably seal it all in epoxy or fiberglass it in or whatever and I was watching one of their really good instructional videos on the Seawater Pro's website and it talked about the fact that you can just mount this flange side to a bulkhead problem solved can't say I'm always gonna read the instructions or watch install videos when I'm doing stuff but in this project it's definitely paid off so check out the videos when you get a chance so I went and bragged about reading the instructions and turns out the high pressure pump has an orientation that matters so while you can mount this motor on a bulkhead like I've done here I actually had it 180 out so the high pressure pump would have been installed upside down so I had to back up a little bit, re-drill that, reinstall it. So that's what I get for bragging. So if you remember the process we went through to get power from the 12 volt panel to the 12 volt pump, now that we have the high pressure pump mounted in the forward compartment, we have to do the same thing with 110. So on the Leopards, on this same panel, they have 110 on the top, 12 volt on the bottom. So we found a switch up in the panel that we wanted to use we got the number off of it we came down here and traced um we traced where the where the fuse would come out we basically had to come in here same way ran wires uh, all the way through drill a hole in the bulkhead and get power up to the front so 
almost exactly what we had to do for the water line. Uh, we had to repeat those steps to get this power line from the 110 panel all the way to the front to the motor. <clears throat> all right, so we are, uh, I would say day three, but the first day was only a couple hours. Yesterday was a, a pretty good effort, six or seven hours. And uh, got to run to the store this morning, pick up some stuff. And I think we will be making water by the end of the day. But one thing I wanted to point out is you can see uh, orientation of uh, this output port right here. Uh, when I mounted the membranes, I basically used the way they had labeled it, mounted them to the board, but that's causing some issues with where all the gauges and the pressure adjustment knob has to go. So I'm going to have to uh, unmount this membrane and actually rotate it 180 degrees um, or flip it 180 degrees so I can get all this stuff to lay out the way that I want to. So. Uh, take a little bit more time uh, thinking through exactly what that final orientation is and where your gauges are going to be before you mount this stuff and it might save you uh, a little bit of trouble. So got to back up a little bit before we move forward. All right so we have 12 volt power and water to the bay where this is going. Uh, we have 110 and we have the high pressure pump and motor mounted. Um, and just to kind of get, give you a quick overview, we mounted mounted the, all of this on a piece of three quarter inch melamine. melamine. So if we have to do any work, we can actually uh, unbolt this and remove the entire board to do any work on it and then reinstall it. Uh, so once we get this into position, all we should have to do is water to here and then seawater from here to the high pressure pump and then the high pressure pump uh, line connected to here uh, and that should be all that we need to do today just to make water and kind of test out the unit the fresh water flush will go from we'll put fresh water in from the boat here run it out the other side and then come into the charcoal filter so let's go make some water All right, so Jen's inside. Uh, we have this temp installed with a strap uh, just while we uh, make a little water and do some testing on the unit, check it for leaks before we do the permanent install. Should see some seawater coming in shortly. Turn it off. I forgot to hook up this hose to the high pressure pump. All right, so that's a little embarrassing. Uh, now we have, we're going from here over to the high pressure pump in the back. So, let's try this again. Should see water coming out of the brine discharge soon. Yep. There we go. We have water all the way through the unit. Yeah, we've got a leak. All right, we got trial number two. We shut down the 12 volt pump. Had a couple of leaks here and there. Uh, Tighten those, and they're still leaking. We are back again for trial number three. Same freaking leak. A little heads up from the factory here would have been good. There are pieces in the high pressure regulator that have to be disassembled by you, the consumer, and sealed before final installation. After six separate attempts, we are making water leak-free. 
you can't use water for the first hour of production, so we're just using that water to rinse out the so we're prepping space bay. for some final install. Just wanted to show this real quick. So basically we've got quarter 20, fairly long bolt, uh, fender washer on both sides of this bracket in two places. Um, and I got five sixteenths holes drilled in the uh, bottom of the board. So that's basically just gonna slide over here with a wing nut holding it. And then it's gonna have brackets from the melamine board to this back bulkhead. And that's how we're gonna hold that sucker in place. Now on the front wall, because we've gotta get down into this compartment to, uh, to, in order to make water and run the water maker and adjust gauges and stuff. The front side of the board, I'm basically gonna put a shelf across here, tie into right here, tie into the melamine board, about this height. Um, that way we can step down into here before we step into the compartment. Most of this space is not usable anyway because of this sloped angle. Uh, I might actually put a backer board on it. That way I could throw loose stuff in here uh, that doesn't have to sit vertical. So that's kind of the plan for the final install. All right, so pros and cons on the Seawater Pro. Uh, in, the, in the Pro category, I would have cost. It's one of the cheapest uh, high output units out there that you can get, high output being 40 gallons per hour for us. Second, I would say quality. Uh, all of the bits, especially that they manufacture, look to be well made and off the shelf stuff. It is what it is. It's, that's going to be the same on every unit that you buy. And then the third thing I would put in the pro category is the customer support. Uh, I was doing some of this install on a Sunday uh, and which happened to be a holiday and I was getting responses from the factory usually within the hour on how to get me through that issue and get me on to the next step. The only thing I would put in the con side of this is the paper instructions. The paper instructions are pretty much rubbish. Uh, between the videos online and between the customer support and the little bit that the paper instructions do help you, pretty much anybody can install one of these systems. I got some words. I got some words. <laughs> She's got some words. <laughs> All right, so that is our wire maker install. And while we are taking cold showers still, we at least have endless water for our showers these days. Water for days. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to send them to us. We love the interaction. And if you want to see more updates coming up on what we're going to do to the boat, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we've got solar coming up, lithium, so much sewing. inverter install tons of sewing projects and eventually we will get back to cruising we promise thanks for watching see you next time